I get lots of questions about robotics roadmap, but it's quite difficult for me to just lay out a single roadmap for robotics in general because it's a huge field, literally. But I feel your frustration because I was there too. So if you want to have a sort of bird eye view of robotics and haven't found a good one so far, this video is for you. I have drawn a high level map of robotics engineering instead of just single roadmap so you can have a grasp of where you are and how to achieve your dream project. At the end, this map may result in an overwhelming feeling as it covers the broad topics. However, you don't have to master every single topics or textbooks or double major in a college. Watch till the end and I'll also share how I studied this field as well when I was in college. So let's get started. Oh, by the way, if you're new to here, my name is Elliot. I'm a robotics engineer, educator, and my mission is to help people land in this field of robotics as smooth as possible. Here's the map of robotics. The field is made up of four key topics at a very high level. Control, software, math and physics, and data science, especially deep learning. And if I start from the software, most of you may feel familiar but may ignore the most important topics in robotics, which is control. So let me start from control which I believe is the most important but widely ignored topic by so-called robotics software engineers. To start with, we can imagine a robot navigating from point A to point B, and that's called path planning. And obviously, if you're working with humanoids, motion planning can be a similar topic as well. Yet, all these topics are based on the actuators, the moving components like motors, and these motors are controlled by specific input data or signals. How well you want to control, say, a motor RPM is about the control in control engineering. Traditionally, there are classic control and modern control. Lots of control theories are developed using classic control like Fourier transform, body plot, Nyquist plot. And the perspective of classic control is focused on frequency analysis. On the other hand, modern control comes with matrix form and it seems less complex to begin with at least. But lots of its theories are backed up by classic control theories as well. Another very important topic in control engineering is state estimation. The state estimation is a fancy word for mixing the information from a bunch of sensors in the robot such as LiDAR, proximity sensors, inertia sensors, GPS, camera, pressure sensors, and you name it. It's called robot state estimation instead of state calculation. And that's because you will never know the true values of the robot's position, velocity, angular position, and so on. Sounds odd. Well, then try to measure a length of your pen with a ruler. How exactly can you know? Can you count the carbon atoms at the tip of the pencil? And is the tip of the pencil a perfect geometric triangle? So is it very sharp? Maybe not. So we humans can only approximate the real values. So it's called state estimation. Like I said, the state estimation involves lots of sensors. Then it leads to a topic called sensor fusion. Literally, you want to fuse multiple sensors. And simply, the algorithms to fuse the sensors are often called filters. Although it's quite different from the filters like coffee filter in the kitchen, like I said, modern control theories are backed up by classic control, whose perspective is about the frequency. So just like filtering the noise, we want to filter out the useless information from the sensors and only take into account the useful information from the sensors. So the names of algorithms come with the word filters. One very popular filter is the common filter. It is so popular that you may even feel illegal to call yourself a robotics engineer if you don't know it. The common filter is simply an algorithm for how to add two or multiple Gaussian distributed data. The common filter's perspective of the word is that everything is normally distributed. By the way, you may hear lots of Gaussian distribution in engineering courses while mathematicians call the exact same thing normal distribution, just for your information. Next, the particle filter is based on probability as well. Literally, it sees a robot as a rigid body. Then, it samples lots of, say, position data with distribution and estimates the position of the vehicle literally like the dispersion of the particles. Finally, system identification is another very important field. If you need to develop a new type of vehicle, you want to know how it behaves. Previously, we talked about how to split up the motors to a certain RPM. But if you don't know the behavior of the motor, the control may not be optimal. 
So the system identification engineer's job is about finding out the physical parameters of your robot. And to figure out these data, you need a fitting model which is about the vehicle-specific dynamics, which leads us to math and physics section of robotics. It's never too much to say the backbone of robotics, actually any field of engineering, is math and physics. A good news is that we robotics engineers don't have to worry too much about the quantum mechanics, at least for today. Definitely, we can simply start with calculus, linear algebra, differential equations, and statistics. And if you studied any STEM major, these math topics are mostly covered as well as the good old-fashioned Newtonian Physics 101. Then, statics is a field of study of how force and torque are balanced. Whenever your robot needs to balance, you need to think about balancing the force and torques. Then, we need to consider dynamics, which talks about how machines are moving. The robot arm needs to consider the angular velocity and positions of each arm. Autonomous aerial vehicles come with their flight dynamics. The same goes for the ground vehicle dynamics. If you remember from the control engineering section, this is the dynamics you need to consider. Now, how do we actually implement the control algorithms based on the dynamics? We need to move on to the software part. And before we move on to the software part, let me introduce today's sponsor of the video, which is me. I have this Robotics 101 course to give you a taste of control, state estimation, and dynamics in Python. I understand it's very overwhelming to study all these areas of robotics on your own, and you don't have to master each topic to build a robot. So to help you get started as quickly as possible, I made Robotics 101. If you are curious, click the link here or down in the comment section. Now, to begin with the software, one can always start with Python, C, and C++. But it doesn't hurt to get familiar with languages like HTML, JavaScript, because lots of web and mobile applications are used to monitor the robots in real time, and these kind of apps are called GCS, or Ground Control Stations, or Ground Control Software. Now, the data pipelines to transfer the real-time sensor data to multiple devices and apps are very critical. And these issues are forming one of the areas in software, distributed computing. Regarding the distributed computing, it can be seen as two main issues. One is low-level data protocol, and another is message protocol. The data protocols are about the OSI model in computers. OSI stands for Open Systems Interconnection, by the way. This model shows how the binary data is physically transferred from the software to the machine layer. In between, there's the popular TCP and UDP protocols. Based on the TCP layer, the modern-day HTTP and HTTPS protocols are built. And if you have heard about RS, it's based on the TCP and UDP layers. Next, the message protocol is about how the information can be serialized into binary data to minimize the size of the binary array. Although the JSON is not the binary array, it can be a very good example of how the information can be serialized. Then there are lots of message protocols you can use. Flat buffers, protobuf, mavlink, and opencipher for UAV autopilots. Speaking of autopilots, we need to talk about the embedded systems. These are the small computers everywhere in our lives, like washing machines and chips in your smartphones. The benefit of the embedded system is that by default, they don't come with the default operating system. Modern day operating systems come with a feature called a scheduler, like Windows or Mac OS. With the scheduler, it is not possible to control the hardware like the motor at 1000 Hz, which means this calculation in the loop needs to be executed in 0.001 seconds without the interruptions by the scheduler. These kind of algorithms are often come with the control and state estimation algorithms we talked about in control engineering. Now, with the state estimation in mind, the camera is a sensor. Therefore, it is obvious that computer vision is one very important topic, like object detection. However, tracking the object is not all. Instead, one of the algorithms in autonomous navigation like SLAM, or Simultaneous Localization and Mapping, still relies on the image features. Then, to estimate the real-world 3D positions of the features, apipolar geometry kicks in. Finally, algorithms can never be skipped. The SLAM algorithm is also about searching the stored features to detect and close the loop, so that the robots can search and determine whether a certain location has been visited or not. Yet, with the advance of AI, many of these topics in robotics come together. 
So deep learning is one of the most important pieces of the puzzle in the field of robotics. Although deep learning itself is a part of data science and machine learning, we can start from multi-layer perceptual, which is the neural network. Then, convolutional neural networks are necessary for image processing. The recurrent neural network is useful primarily for the time series data. Then, as we all know, the transform architecture came out and is dominating the field today. And on the other side, reinforcement learning kicks in to augment the control algorithms for multiple robots or swarm operations of the robots together. Finally, let's look at the application domain. Obviously, the application is a combination of all these other topics on the map. First, autonomous navigation is to let autonomous vehicles or robots be able to navigate from point A to point B while solving problems like object avoidance while following the planned path also while drawing the maps. Human-robot interaction is a huge topic as well, so the robots can interact with humans without causing any injuries to humans as a human-level colleague. Bio-inspired robot application is another emerging application in the field. The benefits of the bio-inspired robots are that detailed control and dynamics can be learned from the animals using the domain knowledge of deep learning, control, state estimation, and dynamics. Then, the last piece is finally you. And that's the map of robotics. So what's your dream project? Please comment down below. I'd love to hear your ideas. And if you're ready to start your journey, don't forget to check out my Robotics 101 course. Link in the description section and then uh, comment section as well. And it's a perfect way to get hands-on experience with the control state estimation and dynamics using Python. And this is exactly how I studied through my career, especially when I was in school. Instead of focusing on individual topics, I set up the project like sensor fusion like uh, with common filter. And then I researched the related topics like mathematical theories, like statistics, like Gaussian distribution, and then vehicle dynamics to implement the common filter specific to this project. So if you are curious about it, also check out my other video about how I study again. So uh, that's it so far. My name is Elliot. I'll see you around.